Indeed. We're going to get into the next arena and go right into the finals match with uh, You Are the Future Charity against uh, DPS Your Wife IRL. Oh, so many team names. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we'll get in here very shortly. Which uh, one are we going into? I'm still loading. I actually oh, yeah. am a huge scrub. I uh, finished building my computer about two days ago, and you know, a really monstrous machine. And somehow I installed Windows 32-bit, uh, and it's only reading uh, 3.5 gigs of my RAM. Oh so, my! Uh, as soon as this finishes, I'm about to uh, reformat my new computer already. It's gonna be awesome. Well, we've got uh, Arena Two and Three look like they're ready to go. You want to go for three? Yep. Yeah, let's uh, let's go. Yeah, three. Fine. Three is fine. Okay. Up for a challenge. There we go. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty scrub. I feel really bad. I spent like all last night trying to figure it out. I, uh, it sucks. <laughs> but well we done. are on, yeah, server three. Well done. So, once again, since you guys don't want it, we're not going to play the video again. We'll get the teams in here as soon as we can. Uh, in the meantime, either my chat isn't loading or everyone is not talking in it. Uh, we are going into the finals match, which is going to be You Are the Future Charity against DPS, My Wife, IRL. And this is going to be a best of three, winner takes most all. Not quite all, I guess. It's a split between first, second, and third place. So uh, SOAC did manage to get into the gold at least. But uh, that's good to go here. And we're getting the teams in as soon as possible. We'll start discussing items. You just saw this map, so you don't have to go into it. But if you're joining us late, my name is Phil Westerfox, and joining me today is Sean Android Buell. It's been a uh, fantastic night tonight, guys. I'm glad for you joining us. We are going into the semifinals right now. You are the future charity versus uh, DPS. So, best of three coming in here. A couple more games. We're almost done. We almost have our victors. Uh, these should be some uh, really good games. Like both teams have been playing fantastic today. Absolutely. And we'll start looking at item builds as soon as one or two more players get in here, uh, and we'll be good to go here shortly. Uh, it looks like the red team... Let me actually fix the titles for the teams here. Let's see. Future. And this one. And DPS. There we go. That's fixed up. All right. So we'll go ahead and start talking about the item builds on the red team since they're here uh, already. So first looking at Matrix E, we have six runes of the Ogre. He's got his staff with superior energy and the Valkyrie amulet with Berserker's Jewel. Uh, yes, yeah, sorry, one second. Okay. Uh, yeah, so definitely probably going to switch that staff out like we've seen him doing for uh, Scepter Dagger. Uh, running 0, 10, uh, 0, 30, 30 with uh, Lightning Flash, Arcane Wave, and Misform. So the double stun breaks a lot of utility. You can get some reses. You can do some Lightning Flash turning errors. And what's that really going to be strong at in team fights? Uh, it's you got uh, a lot of utility. You're you're putting out a lot of buffs for your team when you're switching attunements. Uh, you have really strong AOE heals in uh, water attunement, and. Um, and then you even have pretty high damage. Uh, the reason why we are taking a little longer to go over the build, guys, just to let you know, is uh, DPS is having latency problems. So they have a couple minutes to clear it up. Uh, so we're just taking a little while. We got we got to cover some space. Okay. So uh, next up is I'm up hemp, who's got six runes of the soldier, a hammer, and of course scepter shield, along with the cleric's amulet with the soldier's jewel. So same uh, build we've been seeing him run uh, all day. Uh, rank 0, 0, 0, 30, 10, 30. Um, really good condition damage. She's been fantastic at uh, team fighting all day. So, yeah, it's been fantastic. I'm moving on to Kaboom. Kaboom? Oh, I see Ovi next on the list. Oh, oh, I was just going over Ovi. Uh, Ovi, I'm sorry. Okay. I think I skipped uh, Da Vinci. Uh, oh, yeah, so the... rude on Ovi. Oh, just not, we're not going to talk about Ovi yet. <laughs> all right, six runes of Duena on Ovi. Uh, who's got the short bow and the sword torch with Shaman's Amulet and Cleric's Jewel. Yeah, again, that, that is uh, Da Vinci, just for anyone curious. Uh, running the same build we've seen almost all Guardians running today with the Cleric's Amulet. Uh, the only difference uh, in what we're seeing him do is he goes 0-5-5-30-30. Uh, um, 
and he has that the five points in radiance is that justice is blind when activating virtue of uh, justice. Nearby foes are blinded. So when you don't have stability, that can be really good for uh, some, some stomps. All right, and up next, Kaboom with six runes of Balazahar, and he's got double pistol, yeah, with a Shaman's Amulet and a Rabbit Duel. <laughs> so yeah, uh, doing the uh, condition damage, the Shaman uh, gives him a little bit of healing. He actually is running a different build right now. This is pretty uh, cool. He is running a healing turret, a elixir gun, uh, the uh, toolkit, and a elixir arm. So he's got uh, some team utility. He's running 10, 20, 0, 20, 20. So yeah, that elixir gun is going to be very interesting to see this game. Uh, some AoE heals, some poisons. Uh, that they might not want to have uh, problems with poisons. So, yeah, it's going to be cool. And moving on to Satterkoni. Satterkoni has five runes of the Eagle and one rune of Divinity. He also has Sword and Pistol in one set and Great Sword in the second. He's running the Berserker's Amulet with a Berserker's Jewel. Uh, yeah, and the same, I believe that's the same. We've seen him running all day. Uh, yeah, 20, 20, 0, 10, 20. So he is running Signet of Illusions and Decoy. So pretty, pretty good. Uh, it's like a Phantasm. A little bit different than a Phantasm build, but uh, he's, he's been running Phantasms for a while. He runs a lot of different builds, uh, and it's proven very, very good today. All right, and we'll go ahead and start having a look at the blue team while we get on the last one to connect. Uh, that happy kid running the six Scholar runes with a sword focus as well as a staff and his amulet is a berserker's amulet with a berserker's jewel. So yeah, running 2020-0030, this is uh, the shatter build that we've been seeing a lot of, uh, Zeph, uh, Cutie, uh, making it extremely popular, but he is running the staff, so more, more like Zeph right here. Uh, instead of blink though, he is taking mirror images uh, for his stun break. Uh, gives you a little bit of you can set up some cool burst stuff, especially with the staff. Uh, you can instantly make just like three clones. And then, uh, yeah, portal for uh, team mobility and illusion of life for resurrections. All right, up next we have H-Man Ellie, who has six runes of divinity, two daggers, and the Valkyrie's amulet with Berserker's jewel. Yeah, same build. He's been running uh, all day the triple cantrips. Uh, with Dagger Dagger, very good tank support build, um, running 0, 10, 0, 30, 30. Alright, uh, Apollo's up next, and he's got six runes of Lissa, one exotic staff, he's got a sword pistol, as well as a Berserker's amulet with a Berserker's jewel. And yeah, he is running 10, 30, 0, 25, 5. Same build we saw him running earlier. Uh, this is... Maybe a little uh, normal. No, it's it's a really good uh, phantasm build. It's really good for one v ones. He has mass invisibility for uh, team play as well. Uh, I've seen this. I've seen him running this build today, and I've really liked what I've seen. So a bunch of cool mesmer builds today. All right. Up next is Wake. He's got six runes of divinity as well as a staff and a Valkyrie amulet with a Berserker's jewel. Yeah, again, another uh, triple cantrip. Uh, he's got the staff right now. I think he's been running uh, dagger, dagger. He is 0, 10, 0, 30, 30. Again, uh, another good uh, team support. All right, and finally, but not last, or not least, uh, Lucy Lee with the six runes of Lissa. He's got sword, dagger, and sword, dagger with a berserker's amulet with berserker's jewel. So 10, 30, 0, 30, 0. This is the build that we've been seeing a lot of today by Thieves. Uh, it's been proven really good. We saw uh, Kruk running a variation, not Sword Dagger, Sword Dagger. But we've also seen Cade running almost the same exact build today. It's, uh, it's actually proven really good. And it looks like we are all ready. All right. We'll be getting started very shortly here with the first of the best of three in these finals between... Uh, the red team, you are the future charity, and the blue team, DPS, my wife, IRL. And as soon as they already up, we'll get going. Here we go. And there we go. About 10 seconds. My name is Phil Buster Fox. Joining me today, of course, Sean Android Buell. And this is the Tower Dive TV slash SOAC Weekly Tournament. 
Glad to have you guys tuned in for the finals. The game's about to start. Five seconds. Both teams uh, doing their swiftness buffs, and we're going to see the splits. Hold on to Here we go. Points. One Ranger going right over to the mine. The rest of the red team going right down the middle. Uh, only one Mesmer going down the middle right behind them. But uh, looks like uh, one Spot going to Henge, and the rest heading towards Keep, it looks like. Keep is the first arrived at by returned. Matrix E. He may be able to get a little bit of it going, but there's H-Man Ellie quickly getting into position there, and right back off the point as they try and fight for control of this middle point. Henge is taken by the blue team, and uh, then H-Man Ellie goes down all alone on that point, surrounded by four of the red team. He's back up once again and goes right through the portal to get out of a bad situation. Meanwhile, Ovi is 1v1-ing with uh, Apollo over at the mine trying to backdoor them just a little bit. Uh, Blue with a slight advantage here from that earlier cap point. Uh, though Keep does go down to the red team. Yeah, and that's uh, you are, uh, you're the future. Is, again, really, really good in team, uh, team fights. They're, they're uh, doing really good here in mid. Um, Pretty much in large scale team fights, uh, they haven't really been losing unless uh, they were down a player or all their cooldowns. So uh, hopefully, uh, Blue will send a, a little more people or manage their cooldowns, maybe target better. I'm not sure what the problem is, or, but uh, yeah, we can see uh, Blue team actually doing really well right now. Yeah, they did manage to take out Kaboom in the middle point there. They've got a good chance of retaking this keep. It's at least been neutralized, so that's definitely a start. Walke and uh, it looks like I'm a pimp and Matrix E fighting over this point in the middle here. Lucy Lee and the Happy Kid assisting. Uh, that portal right in the middle of the point, bringing Seder Coney to the fight very, very quickly. And Kaboom is back as well, quickly getting that team fight advantage back to the red team as they're all there. I'm a pimp running into a lot of trouble there. But all of the blue team just kind of pounding them down. I'm a pimp goes down. He's taking a lot of damage very quickly. Are they going to be able to get him back up in time? No, the stomp goes down, and I'm a pimp is out of this fight. Kaboom goes down as well, and he's in a lot of trouble now as well. He's about to get taken down here. Probably there we go. There's the stomp, and down goes Matrix. He beat Blue Team. Really took this fight by storm, and they are definitely showing a great strong start here at the game. Been getting their 2 to 1 advantage here very shortly. That portal is still there, but I don't think anyone's going to get through it in time in order to protect that point. And Blue Team, uh, they are sending two over to Henge, or one's going Henge, one is actually going to start Chieftain. Uh, and then everyone else from Blue, uh, we have one at Keep and everyone going to Mine. So really trying to push their, uh, their, sorry, uh, their uh, awareness, or sorry, their, uh, Oh my gosh, lost for words right now. They're map trying to control. control the map, right? Map control, that's the word I was looking for. Uh, really trying to control their um, the map right now. Oh so yeah. Doing fantastic. They are controlling the flow of events here. We've got Spawn here, or a Chieftain being pulled all the way back to Henge pretty much. Uh, although it looks like Apollo did finally go down while pushing out that mine point. But still two to one point advantage here. And the fight at Henge is pretty important here. We've got Matrix E and Kaboom against Wonky and... Uh, well, there was someone else here earlier. I don't know if they must have gone through that portal. But it's and just there we go, H-Man coming up right now. Perfect. Ellie is here to help out just a good bit here. But this point has been neutralized, so unfortunately, Blue Team's lost their 2-1 point advantage. Yeah, they are still up around 60 points right now. Uh, they do have the 1-1 one one point uh, right now. Uh, pretty much fighting at hand. Looks like Red Team will be able to take it. Waki goes down and Kaboom is going to get to stop. No, he's going to miss. Keep it alive for a little bit longer, but no one on blue is heading over to uh, keep it neutralized. And that's three dead on the blue team now. That's going to be probably a captured keep and a hench there pretty quick. Oh, look, looks like some got to hench just in time. No, 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 that's just a dead body. I'm sorry. <laughs> so Red Team does have triple cap right now. Time for a, a comeback. Uh, uh, yeah, a that's gonna gap mine in your hinge. Definitely gonna help them out in getting that point gap closed out very quickly here. Mine is contested, but not hugely so. It's not gonna be neutralized unless Ovi keeps dodging right out of the point here and allowing Apollo to neutralize it like that, uh, which did happen. So the point did get neutralized, but that still leaves them a two to one point advantage, and now they're leading in points there. That's a beautiful team fight they had in that last segment at the keep just won so many different situations there against the blue team. And over at uh, mine, uh, Ovi and Apollo, it's a very close fight right now. Um, 
Paul might be able to take this. Yes, he does. He's able to get Ovi down. Uh, Ovi was actually getting a little bit tricked out, and with all the uh, illusions, Ovi's going to go down, and Apollo's going to get this point right here. There we go. That's going to help out the blue team a little bit, but red does get the double cap otherwise. They've got the keep, and uh, actually, they've got the henge, and they've got the mine uh, against the keep's uh, blue team. Yeah, so blue team will have the two-point advantage right here, um, able to catch up in points a little bit. They're only about 25 down, uh, and both buffs are up right now, so we could see people heading over to the buffs to get those 25 points uh, and secure a little bit of an advantage. We got a bit of a fight going over by Chieftain here. Uh, Lucy, Lee, Waki, and that happy kid uh, taking down I'm a Pimp pretty heavily there. Sterkomi is down and dying. I'm a pimp in a lot of trouble here. It's all him against three of the blue team here. And that's going to open up Chieftain if they so wish to do it, if they can get him down. And down he goes. Here comes the attempt stomp by Lucy Lee. And down goes I'm a pimp. It's going to give red team a bit of a difficulty here as blue is recovering the points and getting some kills once again. Catching back up. This game is so very back and forth. And yeah, this game, it's like a, a ring around the map. <laughs> Every, if some team catches a point, someone else is. It's, it's, it's not a Zerg, but uh, the points are just switching hands very, very fast. And it's been a very even game throughout the whole uh, time, uh, 215 to 222. Now Blue's triple capping, earlier we had Red triple capping. Uh, this game is all over the place. It is, it's very hard to see where this will go next, but Red Team's got two downs right here over by the keep. Kaboom is in a lot of trouble here. Ovi did manage to get back up, but Kaboom is all alone against Ellie, and down Kaboom goes. And that's, they lost the triple cap, but they won that fight there a bit. And that's going to give an opportunity to make something happen off the back of that while Kaboom is respawning. And, yep, no one's still dealing with the boss. Everyone's kind of just running right by him. Uh, they, they're just focused on the fighting. They're focused on the fighting. Oh, Blue should be able to pick up Henge right here to give them a 2-1 to one point advantage. They're up around 40 points right now. Uh, Satterkoni getting chased around by Lucy Lu. Like and and Satterkoni goes down. Oh my. Uh, he's in a lot of trouble there. Lucy Lu, very low escaping there, but manages to get away. Satterkoni got some help from I'm a Pimp, but Wake is there to help Lucy Lee. And uh, looks like they're going right back on Satterkoni, trying to knock out the somewhat squishier uh, of the two. I'm a Pimp, of course, extraordinarily tanky. His double cap for Blue may be contested here if they can't get into that point well enough. But uh, now it's three on the red there. So they're going to be able to pull away the henge from the blue team. But blue is still leading by about 50 points. And still, the two bosses untouched. Yeah, red team is going to pull both side points right here. So very good. Uh, blue team keeping uh, keep pretty strong. It looks like they might. Yep, they did start chieftain right here. Uh, Matrix. Sorry. Can't really see. Matrix, uh, Matrix and Sarakoni managing yeah, to work Coney. on this uh, a chieftain fairly well here. Uh, if they get that, that's going to helpfully reduce the deficit they're behind there. Now they're only 30 points behind, so that's going to be a nice little comeback. They can pick up Zvanir as well. They'll be tied up. And, you know, they've got the double points now, so they'll eventually tie up in any case. Uh, only six and a half minutes remaining in this good. match. Fortunately, uh, it's been a lot of triple and double capping instead of just uncontrolled for a long time, so I don't think we'll see this come to the timer. This has been a very action-packed game. Our fights everywhere, people dying everywhere. We have the elixir R go down for Kaboom. Yeah, Kaboom is down, but in the middle of the elixir R, it might not be enough. Now Ovi is down as well. They're running in a lot of trouble here with three of the blue team just beating them down. I don't think they're going to be able to get back up from this. Uh, and but you don't know it yet. They're, the blue team left, that's fine. And Apollo and Happy Get are apparently going to finish that off by themselves. And Kaboom going down as well, so that's two kills, and that's going to be the mine going over to the blue team. Oh no, I'm a pimp getting there just in time to try and fight this, but Happy Kid is there as well, giving a 2v1 for them. Up at the keep, meanwhile, Wake and uh, Lucy Lee are fighting Stater Coney there, and getting the advantage of Stater Coney, not nearly the tankiness to fight in these 2v1 situations that he's finding himself in a lot. Meanwhile, at the Henge, Matrix C against H-Man. H-Man pushing him out of the point, looking to, <laughs> once again, possibly triple cap here if he can keep him out of the point long enough. Uh, it's so very close to being able to take this point away. Uh, that was H-Man. And blue team almost triple capping again if they're able to get Henge. It is a 2v1 on the Henge, H-Man uh, against Matrix and, and OV, so I doubt that's going to happen. But blue team up 40 points, uh, 2 points to 0.
Indeed, and that's going to be very hard for the red team to really counteract here. They're going to be able to pick up Henge, no problem here. But uh, Mine and Keep are fairly well controlled. Uh, spawn here is the open one, but no one's near it for their team, so they can't quite kill that to make up the difference, even if that was a wise thing to do. But, uh, I mean, H-Man and uh, Lucy are making their way back to defend the keep now that the henge has been lost blue just needs to sit on their two to one point advantage and hold these points for just a bit longer and they can come away with a win yeah it looks like it's going to be a three on three here in mid uh they might try and hold it i think they are going to try and uh, keep all three people there uh just so they can secure it uh h-man's running around trying to get the damage on uh but yeah it's a really good fight actually <laughs> yeah, definitely. Uh, the mine was easily secured over by Apollo, but it uh, looks like Red Team is making a very solid push for the center point here. H-Man doing his best to try to get these guys off the point and do the damage possible needed to keep this alive, and so far so good. Wonke is down for the blue team, but up almost immediately. Kaboom is down now, and he's got friends all around him, so he should be fine as well. I'm a pimp also down, and it's starting to turn against the red team just a little bit till they can get these guys up. Up they go, so everyone's back up and healing up quite nicely. And now it's just Wonke and Lucy Lee there. Uh, H-Man uh, is back once again into the fight. Stater, uh, Terracone takes a lot of damage pretty easily here, but so far this fight is turning out. And they actually get the buff right there. 25 points for oh, blue team. Beautiful. 499. And there's and the win it. for uh, the blue team coming out 500 to 391. Nice little buff to get towards the end there, but right before they lost the two points for that incoming uh, income, and they will be moving on with one team advantage for the blue team there, and that's uh, of course DPS. Uh, taking the first win of this best of three in the finals. Uh, did that that DC just happened right there? It I did believe. just happen. It's yeah, it, right it happened the, the same minute that they won. So yeah, they won. The DC's fine. <laughs> but yeah, so next up will be of course Faux Fire, the second in our lineup. Uh, this of course has the Lord worth 150 points. If you are do manage to kill him in the middle of on well, the back of each team's uh, base here. We get a bit of time here for Lucy to try to reconnect here. He's actually been having uh, internet problems all day. So, a little sad for him. Uh, he, he's been lagging. He's not been able to join games. Uh, it's kind of what's taken a little bit. Uh, but he should be in here uh, any second and we'll get this going on. Uh, while we're waiting, do you guys want, you are the future to win this game, take the series or or, or sorry, not yeah, uh, oh my gosh. Sorry, uh, my uh, air conditioner actually broke, and it's probably like 110 degrees in my room right now. I'm like melting. Oh um, yeah, so it's been a fantastic day. I do apologize, guys. Uh, but yeah, uh, who, who are you guys looking at to win this? Do you guys have any preferences? You are the future um, versus DPS. Ooh. Well, we're waiting for Lucy. And, and while we wait, uh, I don't think anyone's really going to change up their builds. We'll just have a quick look around while uh, we wait on that. Health increasing. All right. So has chat responded yet? Have they caught up to our delay? Let's see. URTF, H man, H man, URTF, but DPS will win. H man. Everyone likes H-Man, apparently. There's a cheer for Apollo and OV. <laughs> yeah, H-Man's uh, done fantastic. Like I said, uh, you know, normally a running warrior, last week running Necromancer and warrior, uh, and now on Ellie, he's like the uh, master of all for the uh, competitive scene on NA. Yeah, it's fantastic to see. Versatile players are wonderful things. Uh, looks like we're just waiting on Lucy Lee now to reconnect, so... Uh, having a look around at people's builds, it, uh, okay, for a second there he had changed his staff. It looks like most everyone's kind of sticking to the same, not noticing any differences as I go. I'm just going to jump on my thief and play for them. <laughs> Done Fantastic. casting, I'm, it's, time, it's time for me to play. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, you have to have to be signed up as a sub on their team, and I'm pretty sure you aren't. 
So, GG. Sad sadly, sadly, you know, all the teams want to wanna pick me up. Now, no. what they really need is me as their thief with my double pistol thief. No, nah, I'm just uh, trying strong. to get a little better so I can uh, dual uh, grouch. I want to dual grouch on stream. I got I to gotta take it to the blue level. I was told I need to dual blue the uh, good, Friday. Good luck. Good yeah, luck. good luck with that. <laughs> me, I'm a pistol pistol thief. I can't duel anyone. Except complete noobs. I'm also a noob. Alright, so let's have a look at what else chat has been saying. Um, lots of H man stuff. Shoutcaster tournament. Blue is horrible. Okay, if you think blue is horrible at this game, you haven't seen me play. <laughs> 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 I am awful. That's why I'm shoutcasting and not playing. Among others, hey, there's Lucy Lee! Fantastic! So the casters can be ready for. <laughs> That's how I spell ready. No one got to see it except Android and the people in the game, which was fantastic. And we'll, we'll be like, getting read that Etsy. <laughs> read that Etsy. Everyone, read that Etsy up. And anyways, so everything should be pretty similar. Quick look at Lucy Lee's. Yeah, everything looks pretty much the same there. Sword, dagger, sword, dagger. Okay. So yeah, it looks like everyone's basically sticking to their guns from before. And uh, can I move that down? There we go. That way? No, don't let me move it that way. Stupid map. Okay, anyways, in just a moment here, we'll be getting started. They're getting uh, a little set up. Now we'll get ready to go. This, of course, uh, once again is Phil Buster Fox, joined today by Sean Android Buell. And we are casting the Tower Dive TV slash SOAC weekly tournament for Guild Wars 2. Grand prize is 150 gold. And whoever plays this first gets the lion's share of that. So, I mean, Android doesn't really have much use for gold, I know, because he doesn't play PvE at all. But maybe some of these guys actually play PvE and will enjoy that. Absolutely, guys. And I want to say thank you again to everyone that donated gold. Uh, we had a bunch of people. We, we farmed a little bit, but a bunch of people uh, donated gold uh, to make this tournament happen. So... Uh, if you were part of that, thank you uh, so much. Uh, we really do appreciate that. I know these players do as well. Indeed, and hopefully in the near future, ArenaNet will start sponsoring some of these more often, so it won't be so much go for donations and such to try to give prizes to players. Yeah, uh, yeah and, and good points. Uh, if you don't play PvE, you could still yeah, d uh, convert them to uh, gems, get those uh, cash shop items. Get the cool primeval armor, uh, and buy character slots, name changes. So uh, I guess there's a use for gold for everyone. Indeed. Uh, I would use it to buy bags. <laughs> <laughs> you would buy that with glory, I think. You know, the eight slot bags, the four slot bags. Eight slot too small, I need like 30. Do they make 30 I slot bags? I, I don't even know if those exist, because I, I think I have like 12 slots that I got from... Uh, I'll just get so launch, much gold. Get like 12 slots. Yeah, I'll get so much gold that I can buy 30 slot bags and through Arena Net. Like I'll convert all my gold to gems and give it to the developers so they make a 30 slot bag that I can buy with gold. All right, here we go, guys. The match is starting match up right now. Um, all right, here we, we do go. have DPS up one game. And the game is about to begin. We're going right over to the map to see what the initial splits are. If DPS the takes this map, they win the brain. tournament. If not, we move on to Battle of Kylo for the tiebreaker. All right. In two seconds, we'll see the split here as they Hold go out the point. gates. See now we see, uh, looks like two from the red team going down to the quarry. The rest going up towards the graveyard and waterfall. Two, uh, three from the blue team going to the graveyard directly and two going to the waterfall. It looks like it's going to be a 2v2 at the waterfall and at the graveyard it's going to be just one person at first. I'm a pimp trying to 1v3 here. Uh, well, 1v2 here as uh, one of the thieves goes down towards quarry. And this is kind of what we've been seeing a lot this game, you know, the 2v2s at Waterfall, uh, and then 1v1 at uh, Mid and Quarry, and, you know, someone else just roaming. Sometimes we see uh, 2v2 Graveyard as well. Oh, that portal play getting Matrix out of a bad situation quickly. Back to a little bit of Stavey where Sator Kony can get him back up into the action. But well, Blue Team kind of dominantly won the fight over at Waterfall, which is a great start. Quarry, of course, is basically uncontested at first, but now here's Apollo trying his best to cap this back point against Ovi. Meanwhile, up in the mid in Graveyard here, uh, looks like Red's got the slight earlier advantage in this. We see these right up in the action trying to get stuff happening, but Ellie is down and uh, H-Man running into a bit of trouble there. 
Uh, he is able to get res there, actually. Yeah, so he's back up and into the fight once he ends. Expect to see a lot of that for a while until these cooldowns are down. Uh, but we do have Lucy getting a bit caught there, bursted down rather quickly, and a lot of trouble here. Unless the res comes in, that's going to be a dead Lucy Lee, and down she goes, and that's going to make a nice, easier fight for the red team here. However, they've lost Corey, and Blue's just raking in the points from the waterfall, which is uncontested. So yeah, blue team having that one point right there. Uh, the fight on Quarry is going in Obi's favor right now. And uh, pretty much just this big team fight mid uh, looks like it's actually going in DPS's favor. Uh, well, pretty much all full of health. All the cooldowns still pretty decent. So uh, blue, blue in the lead a little bit. And they actually get... Uh, Satter Kony down right there. I'm not sure if they're going to be able to get the stop. Nope. He's back up once again. Ovi's in a lot of trouble, though. Ovi almost going down to Apollo, down over by the quarry there. But instead, Kaboom is the one who goes down first and gets revived almost instantly. Apollo is now down before Ovi could go down, just running that very slim amount of health there. Actually winning the fight a little bit there. Apollo in a lot of trouble here, unless something can happen. Uh, Stare Kony down in mid along with Kaboom. And it looks like the fight is turning against them at this point. Apollo does die down at the quarry, allowing the red team to finally retake the quarry there pretty soon. But it uh, looks like the trouble is happening for blue, uh, red team in the mid. Stericone and a lot of trouble, very low. Possibly about to get revived here thanks to Matrix and Kaboom, getting him right back up. So they're back into this fight. Lucy Lee is the one who is down now on the Hazi, but she's back up once again. And these revives coming through consistently to make sure that these squishy characters who are getting burst down pretty fast, like Lucy and uh, like Stericone, are getting back up. But Lucy is dead for real now. And Stericone running back with just a sliver of health. H-Man and Happy Kid both taken down. Things are really heavily turning against the blue team in the center fight now. Yeah, and blue team is up about 25 points right here. Uh, now 20 with that stomp. Uh, so really close game. Red team is picking up a lot of kills though. If they can carry this momentum, get some points back, um, and then they could, yeah, definitely take a nice lead right here. Oh yeah, they've gotten the double cap and they have neutralized the waterfall. Lucy Lee versus Matrix E. A nice rhyming matchup there as uh, Matrix E is trying to take away this point, but Waka. Uh, Waki comes in there and secures it, but Red Team is now starting to come out ahead after that early blue advantage. Yeah, Red Team having two points right now. Blue about to get another point. Uh, they're up, uh, you know, 15 points right now, but they are capturing points at a faster rate. If they're able to hold these two points, it's really going to put them ahead. Uh, Red Team's focus fire really just coming to play right now. They're able to get people down. Um, Apollo going down often, uh, H-Man going down often, uh, but thankfully their team is really getting some uh, reses up even without Guardians. And another stomp goes down onto Apollo, giving a nice cozy defense here for the red team at Graveyard. Corey completely unattacked because it's usually Apollo the one doing that, but he got caught out and killed, and now the blue team is trying their best to engage at the Graveyard here. They're behind by about 40 points now. The longer this goes before they can neutralize this, the worse off they're going to get. Kaboom taking a lot of damage there, and H-Man as well, but they're both staying in there. Kaboom is down. Kaboom's in danger here, but he's getting saved by I'm a Pimp, doing a nice knockback all around him, and he gets Kaboom right back up. H-Man getting misting away very to safety. He's going to sit back there and heal as best he can, but Sarah Coney is down the next down, but he's right back up again, and he's going around trying to... Okay, I thought he was going to go after H-Man, but H-Man is back up, and he's coming back to the fight here very shortly here. We're going to see H-Man, uh, oh, he's going for the waterfall instead. <laughs> Lucy backing off just a little bit there, getting right back into the point, using great use of status step to get in and out of that fight. Yeah, and, and that's kind of the problem without having a Guardian, without having all those sources of uh, stability. Um, Blue is actually having kind of a hard time getting some stomps off. Every time someone down, uh, comes down, they're almost instantly back up, especially you know with the Guardian shield, Da Vinci uh, popping the shield with the straights, Kabooms, Elixir R, um, even Illusion of Life, they're all just coming back almost instantly whenever they die, and they're completely just outlasting uh, DPS right here. Absolutely they are. Lucy Lee did get back up and back into the fight, but they're having trouble kind of rest this point away. Uh, DP, er, URTF is doing a great job of bunkering, and that's making it so very hard. Uh, OV is down, of course. It looks like Apollo is going to manage to pick up the quarry here. Don't think anyone's going to get there in time to stop it. Happy Kid is down in the center point against a lot of opponents there. I don't think he's going to get saved. He's probably... There he goes. There's the stomp on the Happy Kid. 
And into the point once again goes Lucy Lee and Kaboom. Lucy Lee trying to hold this point, but she does nearly have the tankiness as a thief to stand up to the four of the red team there. They do have the two to one point advantage now, though. So they're going to start making up that deficit they've built up from being behind so long. But uh, with Lucy Lee probably going to go down here as well, a uh, lot of trouble coming on the way of the blue team here. Yeah, we do have uh, two people actually pushing into uh, Koi from red. They're going to try and uh, take that from Apollo. And the fight at uh, Graveyard still going really well in uh, You Are the Future's favor. Indeed, Apollo in a lot of trouble having to back off towards the red base. Uh, but it looks like uh, they're going to be able to retake the Koi. No problem for the red team. And the blue team just not having a whole lot of luck after this early back and forth they had. Red's just been constantly having the momentum in the upper hand. Yeah, and and Red was actually able to uh, take back Quarry. Ovi and uh, Ovi was able to take down uh, Apollo, and so they picked that up uh, back to that two point advantage right there. And H Man uh, is down, to about to get stomped by Matrix E. Oh, misses right out of the way there. Uh, I'm a pimp now left alone against a couple of the blue team, but here comes the stop on H-Man and Matrix E going right back into the fight as a result of that is going to quickly take damage but turn this mid fight back into the favor of the red team despite the earlier blue advantage here. And maybe a little bit of an accident there, but Kaboom did throw down the uh, Elixir R. Uh, everyone on his team was currently at full health. I don't know if he just meant to stack a little bit of retail there or if that was an accident. That might hurt them. I think we've been seeing uh, Kaboom do that a lot, haven't we? Uh, throwing down the Elixir R a bit earlier? One, yeah, yeah, actually a couple times. Uh, you, you are the future, uh, are really good. Like when they see that, they just will completely pull all DPS and kind of wait for it. And uh, that's a good job on their part to not bother with it, but uh, maybe it was a calculated decision to use that Elixir R in order to get them to stop doing it. But Happy Kid goes down. And this graveyard is nice and secure in the hands of Red, and they're starting to pressure the waterfall. Apollo trying to work on the door here. Looks like they want to make a Lord play later, but they don't have enough points for the win just yet. Red does, however, if they were to decide to, and it looks like uh, Staircomi is a little out there. H-Man against Staircomi over near the doors here. It's not like he's currently attacking the door. I don't think it's actually open yet. No, it's not. But uh, he, he looks like he was out there looking to pressure, or at least distract them so his team can take the waterfall. Anyone confused? I actually just got like five messages right there. Elixir R is a uh, light field, so blast finishers in it will give retail. Uh, there you go. Just, just to clarify that. All right, so... And Red team, uh, two to one in points right there, uh, taking uh, almost a 150 point advantage. Uh, blue team really needed to get uh, something decapped right now. Well, Apollo just got the stomp onto Ovi, but here's Stair coming to prevent that from turning into a captured point. Uh, red team's in a great, great situation here. Uh, they're just holding onto their points now instead of trying to go for the Lord, which is really the right call when you've got two points and this much of a lead. Uh, Kaboom is, you know, of course, being attacked quite nicely here. And uh, down he goes, though. A lot of damage coming in. They're going for the stomp, but I don't think they're going to be able to get it off. Just Oh, he does! Wake gets the stomp on a Kaboom. That's going to help them out a lot in trying to decap the center point from the red team. But here's I'm a Pimp, Lucy Lee, and Stericone to try and hold on to it. Oh, down goes Matrix E. Here comes the stomp. And the uh, inevitable mist form to evade it for now. Back into the point. But still, Matrix E is down and not contributing to the fight terribly much. And down he goes. He's dead now, and that's going to be just two fighting against the three or four of the blue team. Lucy Lee going to shadow step right out of there to try and get Ovi off of the waterfall now that they captured it. But there we go. The waterfall is captured, so they're still two to one despite having lost the quarry. And, and only 25 more points to take this uh, game into uh, game three. And a stop for the blue team, but it does look like we're probably going to be moving into a third match here soon. And there we go, uh, that one point at Waterfall, if they're able to just hold that for a couple more seconds, uh, they will take the game. Blue team trying desperately, uh, they're actually going to get the stomp on Ovi. Uh, Ovi trying to hold it as long as possible. Matrix coming in though, he should be able to hold it for the next three points. Yep, and two points left to go, just two seconds left. And here we have it, the win going to you. 
You are the future charity. Bring us into the third match of this best of three for the finals of the Tower Dive TV SOAC tournament. And only the uh, second time we've actually seen Kylo on stream today. So uh, good to see a game going one and one. I am very much looking forward to seeing Kylo again. I very much enjoy seeing how the trebuchets play a part in the match. And I'm looking forward to seeing what these teams decide to do with them. Yeah, you are definitely seeing uh, some uh, a lot of skilled players this time, especially with all the Mesmers running Portal. Uh, I would not be surprised if we were to see a lot of trebuchet action in this game, uh, even repairing them and stuff like that, So, uh, which is sometimes something you don't see. Uh, some people, when their, their trebs get destroyed, they just kind of leave them. But uh, yeah, so treb play is going to be really crucial in this game. Uh, this is going to be a really good match, Fox. I'm definitely looking forward to it, and what better way to end the tournament than with such a close game here. We're in the one-on-one -on -one for each team. They've both had pretty good showings in both of these matches. I'm very excited to see how this ends up. So yeah, Absolutely. We do have both teams loading in. Lucy Lou's actually in here right away, so a very good sign for us. No waiting. Uh, just waiting for um, Apollo to load in. Or not Apollo, I'm sorry. Um, uh, the fifth player of You Are the Future. I'm, I'm drawing a blank for... Oh, uh, Ovi. Yeah, Ovi, of yeah. course. Ovi. I knew that. And we got everyone there in the we game. Go. We're ready to go. So we're going to get started right out the gate here as soon as both, player, uh, both teams are ready to go. We're going to get going very shortly in the last match of the Tower Dive TV SOAC tournament. Winner of this takes first place. Third place went to... Uh, was it SOAC Red that took that? Yep, third place is SOAC Red. A uh, winner of this will be uh, first place, and the loser is going to be in second place right there. And that will be the end of the tournament today. In advance, we'd like to thank everyone for watching before this exciting finale. Once again, if you joined us late, my name is Filibuster Fox, and joining me today is Sean Android Buell. And we are your Shotcasters for this final match of the tournament. And the game is actually starting up right now. Uh, game is starting. And there we go, the countdown timer. Uh, eight seconds before it starts, we're going to see both teams uh, stacking up their buffs. And uh, here we are into the final match of the week one so on to Tower Dive points. TV tournament. Well, we have one Elementalist for the blue team going to the mansion, one Mesmer going to the windmill for the red team. A Ranger already going right up to the trebuchet, and a Thief for the blue team. Uh, the rest are going to Clock Tower. Two going down to the mansion to fight this. Let's have a look at what's going on in the mansion here. We've got, of course, uh, over here, a Kaboom and Matrix X against Wake here. Wake trying to 2v1 to defend this, but Windmill already taken, of course, by the red team. Wake in a lot of trouble in this 2v1 here. Up at the top, uh, Happy Kid finally coming to assist down at the mansion here to get this to a nice even fight. Let's have a look at what's happening in the Clock Tower as we go to... H-Man here fighting I'm a Pimp here in the middle. All three points are contested. None of them have been captured. The Trebuchet shot's coming in to really wreck damage on H-Man here in the mid. Uh, that was really good play by DaVinci right there. Knocks him off with the Banish. He lightning flashes, uh, H-Man lightning flashes back up, gets hit by the trap, knocks him off again. H-Man comes around, he throws in Sanctuary to get him off. Uh, the point is probably pretty close to captured for Red. You know, just a little bit more effort and they'll be able to capture it. None of these points are in control of any of these teams. A uh, very close start to this match. Red team got Windmill for just a little bit to get that 11 point lead, but that's going to be irrelevant pretty here, certainly, depending on how these end up. The Happy Kid uh, is down, and that may be a good sign for Kaboom and Matrix Ian taking the mansion here. Clock Tower goes to the Red team. Happy Kid in a lot of trouble here as uh, Kaboom and uh, Matrix are both on top of him here. And going down very quickly. Ovi does go down, though, over at the windmill. Apollo doing his best to capture that point. We may end up with opposite day when each team is controlling the opponent's near point. And blue team is uh, 4v2 over there at Mansion. Uh, red team is actually doing very good. Happy Kid's been self-revving over there for quite some time. I don't know if they notice or maybe they're just not in a, a point where they can get to him and stomp him out. But if he gets back in, it's going to be really bad for Red. Indeed it is, and he's about to get back in. He's got some help coming up now, so he'll be back in the fight here soon. Uh, Kaboom, very, very low in health, and in comes H-Man and the Happy Kid. Down goes Kaboom, Matrix E, very low in health and a lot of trouble here. The stomp goes on to Kaboom, Matrix E is all alone here. 
against these four blue members. A couple of them are going to back off here. They're going to leave it in a 2v1 situation. Clock Tower is still not contested yet. It's that point lead continuing to bring in points for the red team. And Matrix E is actually doing a really good job. He's got the Treb support, and uh, he's just kind of surviving, staying alive while that Treb is able to take down uh, Walkie and Lucy, but I don't know if he can hold it for too much longer. They're fucked. H-Man is on the trebuchet now, getting that out of action, forcing him off of that. Um, but the mansion is still being contested rather heavily, but the red team's having a 2-1 to one point advantage here and doesn't look to be losing it anytime soon. This is one of the maps where having a Guardian is actually really crucial. Uh, map control on this for uh, Guardian is really good with Banish, uh, Ring of Warding, Sanctuary. It's it's really easy to hold a point, uh, especially against an Elementalist who doesn't really have uh, that many knockbacks besides really like updraft. Um, Matrix it's did really manage, hard for them. Matrix did manage to get a stomp onto Lucy Lee down in the mansion here and still contesting this point two on two. This is going into no one's control and the longer this stalemate goes on down there, the better off red team is. They're now 130 points to 10, getting another stomp on that happy kid and it's just looking so heavily in favor of them. Absolutely, uh, red team 140 to 10 right now. Uh, blue team is trying to contest uh, bunch of the points they actually are able to get clock tower uh, red team doesn't look like they're gonna be able to get on to contest it but matrix he might uh, so now it's blue time blues time to uh, try and capture some points and maybe make a comeback yes now well they've lost mansion now so it's back to two to zero still with only 10 points on the blue team although matrix e and Ovi are both very low Ovi about to go down down he goes uh, Apollo already on him looking for the stomp and down goes Ovi, and that's going to give a chance for Windmill to go. But here comes Starconi, uh, coming Starconi, <laughs> coming in to interfere with Apollo, trying to take the Windmill, and that's at least going to give them that one point advantage. Still, and we're looking at 185 points to 26. With Ten minutes left. This is just a huge early lead for the red team. And Da Vinci's actually back in mid, bunkering it against H-Man and Lucy Lou. He got some backup from Kaboom, and uh, Da Vinci just have really fantastic plays in mid. Um, if it's going how it's been going all game, they shouldn't have too much problem taking it back. But they actually did get some backup. Lucy Liu, uh, as well as Waki are there. Well, Blue Team has finally taken the mansion. I think that's their first point control of the game now. Finally racking in some points. Now Red Team has no. So hopefully Blue Team can capitalize on the momentum that they're going to get from this and start taking this center point and start taking map advantages. A huge fight at the center point. Way too much happening in here. Lucy Lee has uh, not in the fight, but she's very low. Uh, H-Man really being stubborn on that point, staying on there, making sure that it stays non-controlled here. As he stays alive, I'm a pimp in Matrix E, trying to fight back, but it looks like it's just down to I'm a pimp now. <laughs> trebuchet shots coming in. I thought I saw one in there. He may have just been a... Uh, nope, yeah, definitely trebuchet shots coming in uh, from the blue team. That's going to help them out quite nicely. Lucy Lee back there, bringing that fire support in. This fight mid and stomp onto I'm a pimp, giving the blue team this advantage here. Kaboom is the last surviving defender and he gets hit in the face by a trebuchet rock. And he's in a lot of trouble here as the stomp comes down from H Man picking up another kill. Stercone in a lot of trouble now. He is the lone defender of the clock tower now. And blue team's got a little bit of momentum, but they're still not getting that kind of point advantage that they need to really come back in this match. Yeah, Red Team's Treb was just doing tremendous damage on mid right there and really helped them to not lose it right away. Um, it looks like Blue might be able to come back unless Red gets some reinforcements pretty quick, which they are getting right now. I'm Pimp coming right in and just trying to get Stairconey back up into this fight. That uh, little uh, illusion there doing so much work at keeping them off of Stairconey. And back up he goes. And that's going to push things back in favor of Red Team at the Clock Tower. But the other two points were captured by the Blue Team. Looks like Ovi's down at Mansion looking to retake that. Windmill uncontested at the moment. Apollo holding on to it. Stericone coming in to try and do something about it. But Apollo should be able to hold on to that for at least a while. And Red Team should be able to get a capture right now. They actually left. Uh, as soon as they got it, Kaboom's going to hold it. Well, Da Vinci goes to help Windmill right there. Well, that's a 2-1 to one point advantage once again for the Red Team, continuing to increase this huge lead they have. 140 points or so ahead still. Uh, Wake 
sitting in this uh, mansion point looking to recap it in favor of the blue team. Obi's the only one, but here comes Kaboom to try and get some action going in here. But they are heavily outnumbered three to two here. Obi's already down here and in danger of, you know, just being left out of the point. There's the stomp on Ovi, and that's going to give Blue this mansion point without much contested. But still, Windmill and Clock Tower in the red team's hands, continuing to lead this point advantage. Yeah, uh, that 2-1 to one point advantage they're able to keep is pretty good. They're actually almost triple capping for a second right there, but Blue Team was able to take Mansion away from them. Uh, we're seeing a lot of that centralized fighting happening uh, still at keep. Uh, with both trebuchets down, this is uh, uh, just a pretty much a even fight, a little bit even fight, <laughs> without this treb just raining fire. Uh, yeah, and it looks like Red Team is able to hold it fairly well right now. Uh, Satterconi is going down. But he may get stomped here very shortly, or they, uh, nope, they did manage to interrupt the stomp, and he is back up once again, leaving the fight, but he's at least he's alive. And uh, Matrix E is about to go down here over at the windmill, trying to keep it alive. He's being cut it down just a little bit, has to miss form to stay into the point and not get killed. Lucy Lee and Apollo doing a great job of pressuring this windmill point very, very nicely. But I'm a pin, kaboom, both going down. Matrix E down as well. Things are turning against the red team very quickly right now. Stericone is back up, but kaboom is dead. I'm a pimp very, very low, and they're losing the clock tower as a result of it. Blue team picking up the clock tower. It looks like they're picking up the mansion, and they're heavily contesting the windmill as well. This may be their chance to start coming back in the game. They might be able to get a triple cap right here and catch up. I mean, a red team almost has double their points, but a triple cap is actually exactly what they need right now. Uh, if they're able to get some people down, uh, they could go get the repair kit for the treb as well and have that for the next mid fight. Absolutely. Triple cap gives them a chance in this, and then they can just defend, use that treb to keep their guys alive at distant points. But it's they're not getting the windmill right now. They're trying to, they're constantly pressuring it, and they're keeping the red team tied up there at least so they can keep the double cap. But they've got to make some more happen if they're going to really make a comeback in these point differences. Matrix E is down and in danger, being bursted down very quickly. Down goes Matrix E, and that leaves uh, Apollo pretty much unopposed on this point. I mean, we've got Ovi there, but uh, he's got help from Lucy Lee as well, and that's going to really heavily pressure Ovi to try and survive here. Apollo's just kiting around a little uh, pet, chasing him around, but Ovi finally getting caught a little bit there. Uh, just a very tanky, bunkery fight here. Not a whole lot of difference happening as they're both wearing down their defenses. And down goes Ovi finally. Uh, Lucy Lee attempting for that stomp at first, but here comes Apollo for the stealth stomp. And there it is. And blue team may be able to take that capture point away, but red team did pick up the clock tower and they are fighting for the mansion. Matrix yeah, team. that blue team fight was crazy. Everyone's rolling around there like Apollo and uh, Ovi were just rolling, rolling, rolling. It was like, I felt like I was watching StarCraft. There's so many, or Star Fox, sorry. There's so many barrel rolls right there. <laughs> uh, but we do have that 1v1 happening mid right there. There we go, 1v1 for the Clock Tower. Windmill is in the hands of Blue rather heavily. Mansion is contested. Uh, two from the red team against two from the blue team. Uh, looks like slightly in favor of the red team right now, but that can easily change if any help comes. So Wake is down. Now it's just Lucy Lee. They're trying to get them off of Wake, but here comes some help. It's uh, H Man into the fight. Here comes the Cappy Kid right behind with almost no health. With Stericone and Kaboom and Ovi and Matrix all here. Four from each team fighting for this mansion here. Windmill basically ignored. Apollo fighting I'm a Pimp in the center point. And uh, Blue Team is doing a really good job of coming back. They were so far behind early in the game, but um, now they're only down 100 points. I mean, that, that's still a feasible amount to come back. Uh, earlier in the game, uh, I thought it was going to be a shutout. I mean, Red was doing such a fantastic job at holding all the points and destroying Blue, but now uh, only 100 points away. Uh, the capture nodes are one to one. If Blue can get Mansion right here uh, and then maybe head over to uh, mid and get it neutralized, they do have a chance to get back into this game. There is indeed a possibility. It's an outside shot, though. They're hoping for the home run here. 
and red team has to really play careful and not give up anything matrix he goes down ovi is down and about to die here he gets stomped as well that's too dead from the red team just kaboom and i'm a pimp here trying to defend for this but it might not be enough oh a nice knockback there They've got to keep the blue team from getting this. Red is out of points. They've been neutralized, all of them. Clock Tower is in blue's uh, control. Red has no points. They're not going to be getting points until they capture one or get a kill. Uh -huh. And blue's been getting a ton of kills right here. They're slowly creeping on on those uh, the points. Well, red's kind of stalling with those points right there. They're not gaining too much. 399 to 330 right here with one capture point for blue. And uh, red team is just taking a lot of damage right now. And Satterconi is going down. That could be another five points for blue. H-Man may be able to get the stomp off in time. Uh, Duke out of the way just in time. But he's still in a lot of trouble here. Apollo successfully... Sticking around to secure the point, and there goes the stomp. Stereconi is down, and this is exactly what the blue team needed. They needed to clear up all these points and start making that point deficit up. They're only 60 points behind now. That's still a lot of way to go when there's less than 100 points left for the red team to win. And under two minutes, they've really got to get over 60 points within these two minutes and keep red team from finishing this off. Yeah, they, they are one to one capture points. Uh, the problem is uh, capturing mid. You know, uh, Da Vinci was doing a fantastic job of bunkering it throughout the whole game but when he left to go leave uh to go help another note that's when they'd capture it and they actually did get that decap on it right now uh, blue can just capture a point if they can rack up a couple more kills they could win this game they can it's entirely possible but they have to be fast and they've got to hold it they're uh, they've got that point deficit some kills will help out with that but they really need to get at least one other point captured or else they're not going to have time before the timer runs out yeah, and Happy Kids trying to do a 2v2, uh, actually 2v1 now, over on Mansion. They were able to get Kaboom down, another kill, another 5 points. Red still does not have a capture point, Blue does have 1. They are only about 35 points behind now. 55 seconds though, they've got plenty of time. If they can get one more point or another kill or two, they can really come back from this. Red team just has to get no points for Blue team to really get this. If Blue can play perfectly, they can come away from the win with this. Matrix E is down seconds. in the point. He might get stomped here. If Lucy Lee can get this stomp off, it's going to be huge. Nope, he can't get the stomp off quite yet, but he's got another try now. One point for the blue, and about a second one coming up very soon. They're only 14 points behind, 22 seconds to go. They need 20 points, another stomp from the red team, giving them a little bit more of a way to go. But they can't let Windmill go into favor of the red team. They've got to hold on to these points, and they've got to get another kill before this ends. They've only got 10 seconds left. It's going to be so close. Seven seconds, five seconds, just a couple of points to go. They've got to hold on to these points, and they might just do it, and... Red oh team God, wins by right one there. point! <laughs> Going down to the zero seconds, 423 to 422. Oh, oh that was goodness. the most intense game I've ever seen as far as the timer goes. Wow, that timer giving the one point win to the red team. Another second would have given the win to the blue or an exact tie. So that is going to be... Uh, which team is red? Uh, <laughs> you are the future charity taking the victory in this first... Tower Dive TV slash SOAC tournament. That was one of the best games I've ever seen, Fox. That was an amazing finish for this tournament. I cannot believe how good that was. I am so, so very happy to have seen that. That was beautiful. <laughs> wow, you are the future charity. Amazing job at taking first place in the first SOAC TV weekly tournament. Uh, in second place, you have DPS right there. And third place was SOAC Red. Well, everyone, my name has been Filibuster Fox, and joining me today, of course, is Sean Android Buell, and we've been casting the Tower Dive TV slash SOAC weekly tournament number one. Stay tuned next Sunday for the second one. It's been fantastically fun and great. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in and supporting the growth of Guild Wars 2 Esports. And we're definitely looking forward to seeing this more. You can follow more about Tower Dive TV at TowerDive.tv, the website, or Twitch.tv slash TowerDiveTV. Also, our Twitter at TowerDiveTV. And, of course, our YouTube channel at YouTube.com slash TowerDiveTV. Pretty easy. You'll see the videos on demand come up on that YouTube channel. And if any other casters manage to get some local recordings of some of the earlier matches we couldn't spectate, we'll get links for those as well as soon as we can.
Still just blown away by that game. Thanks for everyone for tuning in uh, today. I hope to see you all next week. Uh, if you have any ways we can improve the tournament, there, I mean, there was definitely a bunch of ways, and we're, we hope we can uh, improve for next week. Definitely leave us some feedback on Reddit or the forums. Absolutely. So this has been fun. Once again, my name is Phil Buster Fox, and this is Sean Android Buell signing off.